items. Thank you, Chairman Alexander and uh, Ranking Member Feinstein. I appreciate uh, your strong and bipartisan leadership of the subcommittee and our chance to work together. Secretary Meniz, uh, thank you for your service and for your testimony uh, and for your um, very capable leadership of the department. Uh, I'm going to touch on a series of issues um, that are across two priority areas uh, and then ask you to respond with the remaining time. Uh, first, on clean energy issues. Um, first, thanks for your willingness uh, to come to Delaware May 13th for our lab summit. I've visited, as you know, a number of the national labs and um, hope you will discover Delaware to be an uh, open and supportive place uh, that I hope uh, will enter into some public-private collaborations that will benefit from the strength and reach of our labs. The home of the first catalysis center at a university. Correct. <laughs> I'm thrilled, as always, with what you know about Delaware. Um, the independent review of National Labs uh, was released last December and uh, had 36 general recommendations. I'm, I'm interested in your views on whether Congress has an appropriate role and, and what it would be in terms of authorizing and appropriating some of those next steps. Um, second, just in terms of the midterm uh, clean energy issues, uh, you've placed a great uh, priority on clean energy innovation and uh, many of us uh, have supported the doubling of research investment called for by the initial Competes Act. Uh, RPE has made great strides. I was pleased to again be invited to speak at their summit. Uh, and in addition to RPE and energy hubs and EFRCs and NNMIs, there's now regional clean energy partnerships. Uh, I hope you'll speak to them and how, um, as building blocks of the whole innovation pipeline, they fit into your overall plan. Uh, and I hope you'll talk about how do we sustain um, something like the mission innovation uh, commitment, a commitment to doubling uh, investment in the clean energy transition. One. Two, in visiting the IAEA uh, headquarters uh, back in January, uh, I was told that as the world's nuclear watchdog, they need a reliable long-term source of funding uh, to implement the JCPOA and to accomplish their broader nonproliferation goals. Uh, and a recent uh, GAO report said the IAEA faces a potential budget and human resource challenges uh, in order to take advantage of the searching inspection uh, opportunities that the JCPOA uh, opened. How is the department helping the IAEA overcome these challenges, and how are the national labs assisting uh, in the recruiting and hiring and training, which I understand to be a long and expensive process? Uh, and uh, Ali Akbar Saleh, uh, head of the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, just announced that they will be using some of their sanctions relief uh, to train their next generation of nuclear scientists. Is this something about which you think we ought to be concerned, and do you see that as an uh, appropriate use of their funds? That's all my questions, and I'd welcome you using the rest of my time to answer them as possible. Uh, okay, well, thank you, uh, Senator Coons. Uh, first, on the, uh, I'll have to be brief on each of them, uh, on the Cornell report, the congressionally charged uh, report on the, on the laboratories. Um, uh, first of all, I think charging that panel uh, is indicative of the interest, certainly, in, in, this, in this group. Uh, I want to emphasize that the, that the panel, first of all, uh, endorsed strongly the idea of the importance of this laboratory system. It's very important. Secondly, uh, they also uh, home, homed in on something that I completely agree with, that frankly, for a long time, bluntly, I would say from the end of the Cold War, uh, there has been an increasing uh, kind of transactional approach rather than a strategic approach to the uh, to laboratory management. Uh, I think uh, there's plenty of uh, credit to go around. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I think we've made, uh, and uh, the committee acknowledged, we've made some real progress uh, in terms of restoring this more strategic work with the laboratories. I could describe examples, but we have ways to go. Uh, and, and we're still working at it. Uh, we have, uh, we've sent a report to the Congress. We accept and we'll follow through on almost every recommendation. There's a couple that uh, present, present some problems, uh, but, um, but we stay in touch with the, with the co-chairs, and I think uh, this has been a very, very good process. Uh, I can get more specific, if you like, offline. Uh, in terms of uh, mission innovation, uh, you've kind of actually said it uh, uh, all, uh, that there are certainly new thrusts, but I, I do want to emphasize an important uh, strengthening of some of the very successful programs that have been working with universities and labs and industries. You mentioned RPE, so there's a good example where uh, uh, with approximately 200 projects now finished, 36 companies have emerged. Uh, and the fact that in their open call last year, <clears throat> they were a successful program, was able to support 
only between two and three percent of the projects, kind of suggests we're leaving an awful lot of innovation on the table. And as we go into this world, and putting aside one's view of specifics of the Paris Agreement, the fact is every country in the world is committed to pursuing uh, a, a clean energy future. That market, which has been booming, is going to boom even more. We should be there keeping our innovation advantage and moving forward. Thank you, uh, Th thank you Senator Coons. We need to keep oh, moving with the other. Okay, I can come to Iran later on. <laughs>